quality enhancement plan. Uh, are you referring to Bernal's quality enhancement plan? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> So you all are probably wondering what QEP actually stands for, and um, at first I was kind of confused too. When I was asked to be on the committee, I actually thought that it was like queens eating peanuts. You know, I don't know, something <laughs> random. I was like, what is this? But actually it is the Quality Enhancement Plan, um, which is what we're working on to enhance Bernal's vision for critical thinking. This video is to inform students on the university-wide plan called the Quality Enhancement Plan, which is to help students improve on their critical thinking skills. I think critical thinking also uh, requires an open mind and uh, a tolerant mind. You have to trust yourself because you have your you should have your own idea. Critical thinking is um, just not accepting anything at face value to kind of use what you've done in experience and um, what you've gotten in research and what you've been taught and then kind of think outside the box. Definitely the higher levels of thinking. You're no longer just memorizing facts but now you have to um, interpret them and evaluate them and analyze them. Yeah. I usually think of critical thinking like not just thinking about factual information but like conceptual thinking about what does it mean and how can I apply this just like you said with solving problems it's how can I apply the information that I'm given. Critical thinking in and of itself is is a constant reevaluation of where you're coming from. Never get comfortable. That's right. Okay. Um, it really pushes you to think on a different level so that you can actually look into an issue um, and find a position on it and you know be able to defend that position. I'm finishing my you know program in education and so basically my job is I have to approach things and do things with a lot of critical thinking because there are a lot of problems with students that while you know older techniques may have worked in the past they're not going to work in today's society. In English class like when you're sitting at a desk and we're having a group discussion, an like, in-depth discussion about a, sto a short story, um, and all of a sudden you look at like rain in a whole different light. It means something completely different than just a wet substance of moisture. You know, it becomes, it means darkness or it means sadness. And it's all of a sudden the story clicks because of the symbolism of rain. Another part of critical thinking is actually being able to create solutions to issues or actually revise those um, previous solutions that you've seen or that you've come up with um, and actually being able to think differently on it and come up with a new, um, I guess, a new way to solve different problems. I'm a legal studies major so we're always given scenarios that we have to work through and arguments that we have to work with and think about them in depth and um, just try to play with them and know what you're talking about. So, uh, I am a business major business management major, so critical thinking plays a big part in that. Um, everything from trying to figure out with math, which mathematical formula to use for uh, different statistical problems. Um, it also covers like evaluating the position or the issue um, and then actually being able to say what you want to say about it, you know, because that's definitely important. If, if you feel strongly about an issue, you should be able to um, think critically and then, um, I guess, actually like defend your position on it. As far as our teeth, you know, that's our profession, and that's what we're getting ready to go into. It is all, it's clinical reasoning. So basically, you're, you're looking at a, at a subject or, or an example or an item, you find research, and you start delving into that research and you find a lot of different avenues to be able to move into. And I think you're just formulating and obtaining more information to better your your direction and where you're going to move. I guess in biology you kind of just constantly have to infer because like every time there's a question you're kind of like, okay, so why does this happen? And the question why comes up in everything. As far as encouraging critical thinking, one of the activities that I've done in one of my education classes is a thing called a chalk talk. And you have one subject and you draw it in the middle, put a circle around it, and you create a web and you have everyone in the class come up. It's no talking, but you come up there and present your 
particular viewpoint or aspect on that subject. And um, we do improv or something. Um, one of our teachers, is, she says, you can't be afraid of my questions. And she said, I'm going to ask why a lot. I actually go out into the field, like we went on a field trip to the aquarium, we got to look at the fishes and we had our lab books and we got to analyze why the fish turn this color or like cuttlefish, they're so amazing, like <laughs> they can like, change and they have like, they can turn to spaceships and they can like mesmerize their prey and stuff, it's so awesome, like I love biology and just being hands on is the key to critical thinking. I would say I would encourage more hands-on uh, models or demonstrations, stuff like that, just because a lot of people are afraid to speak up and identify the fact that they're more of a hands-on learner or that they'll be able to learn uh, a better style, a different way. When we were reading Lord of the Flies and our teacher decided the best way to teach us how they felt when they were abandoned on the island is by splitting us up and giving us each a conch shell in our own little tribe. <laughs> and like putting up against each other. At the end of the day, we were like arguing over who was better in the book and why this happened and why that happened. I love reading journals. Dr. Casey has reading journals for almost all of her classes and it, it's a conversation between you and the text and I do that with all of my other classes now. I'll just write notes, ask myself questions that I'll review later and it helps me understand the text for really. Journals are great, but also, I love after the reading journals have been completed to come to the class and listen to what other people's ideas were because oftentimes, at least in, in a puzzle of, of literature or a play, um, one person in the class will discover something about one character, but you will find another piece of the puzzle in a different place. I know the one thing that I love that Dr. Frank does is usually if there's something big in current events that connects with our class, he always presents it first, so it's always catching our attention and making us think because we're sitting there and he'll ask us random questions that you don't expect. Think about it.